uh, next one up, uh, I guess we could take uh, Filippo. Are you still around? And uh, unless Eric, Aimee, Sandra, and Alper is jumping into the call, Filippo, you will be the last one I talk to. Cool. Hello. Hey, man. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I am tired, but other than that, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, with two and a half hours, really should stop doing these two and a half hour sessions because <laughs> my quality of help also drops a lot for, for people like you come at the end. Like, I'm already tired, uh, you know. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it's not a bad piece. Yeah, I like it. It's good. Do you have a little bit bounce here? That's what I like to see as well. The only issue here is there's a difference in intensity on these two. Um, this one looks also more white. This one looks a bit different. So you have a focal point of light coming here, but this one is the brightest. So here I would think a little bit about how we understand light and direction and composition of light, pool of light. Um, so if we have a look at the uh, quick at the saturation value, this seems to be bright, but this seems like you want me to look here. Is what it looks like based on your composition and your choice. So with that assumption, with that assumption, like we're gonna pretend that is the case because it looks like it. This one. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. It, that's the case. You know, so this one would be technically the one that's should be a bit brighter and maybe i will exaggerate just for fun to make this like really hot and maybe like this and i will probably dim this down a little bit and i will dim down probably this a little bit okay so i will do yeah. this instead Definitely. Um, and it's kind of the same thing in some of these pieces here as well. So we want to have control our our story. We want to control our um, intention behind our assets, the story, the texture, the material, the presentation of our work, um, and understanding what it makes sense and doesn't make sense. So some of the things we do here is you have uh, something going on here, but it's kind of difficult for me to understand uh, where you want me to look. And also you have, again, the issue with a competing pool of light. So when I say pool of light, you have a bright, dark, bright, dark, which is which is very good. We, we want to do that in lighting. We want to have that kind of, um, uh, that kind of, uh, balance and everything and you want to dim it down a little bit here as well and um, this is already very very bright so you might want to kind of think about how this light is bouncing around the scene a little bit I like this here, this is good, where you can kind of do a bit more. And sometimes, depending on, you know, what you're doing, so you see the difference? Yeah. So that's kind of the things you need to work on on your piece, and, and your work is kind of doing that balance. But also at the same time, I also have to ask myself, does it make sense to have all of this bright? Or would it make more interesting to make it dark, darker on purpose? And again, in this case, I might even go and say, okay, you know what? I want the light is really struggling to come in this area. So I'm going to just make it dark. You know what? I like the mm -hmm. blue air, but it's maybe you say, okay, you know, it's supposed to be a bit darker, more dramatic, maybe. Because you, you have pretty good light going around. So you could probably get away actually with more contrast in some of these areas. So you don't have this weird speck of light from from the skylight or whatever taking too much of attention so you know see 
see the difference? Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's what I would do. And obviously there's always more to do. You don't think this is all I would do. This is definitely not all I would do because I can see that you don't have a lot of information going on here in general. So you know I would maybe dim it down a bit, maybe I would brighten the image a little more, have uh, you know, play around a little bit. Because this is you know all about balance and values, balance and values. So again, I spend a lot of this time with my students. Uh, in my mentorship lessons, you know, we go through this on a regular basis and, uh, you know, explain it on all my videos and recordings as well. This is a key thing. It doesn't matter how good you are in Unreal materials if you do not know how to present this kind of stuff. Uh, and this is why I focus on even in, in these sessions because I want everyone to understand that. It really goes a long way if you do that. And then there's also the color. Okay, it's also understanding how to push the color a little bit. And here I think more warm color would be more better. So just pushing a little bit warm color, you know, you get suddenly a very, very different uh, work of art. You know, so you have um, your version and then you have my version. You know, it has a very different focal point, color, tone, and uh, very very clear direction so would i do this personally probably not i would probably have tilted the light more and i would mm -hmm. probably have the rubble probably over there i would probably have something of interest like a skeleton or someone running or maybe someone coming into the archway and they having their hand up in the air looking you know being blind so certain details i would have done for this environment because i tried lighting this environment myself uh, many a year or two years ago and i didn't submit it on my art station but i downloaded like spiders and everything and they were crawling up the wall and everything but it was so much work so i gave up uh, but you know <laughs> uh, it's a cool scene actually but this kind of scene will really do very cool by actually adding more uh, spider assets or spider web and it will be yeah. a really cool scene so i would actually do that for this particular scene probably uh, so something to tell more of a story yeah it's very important even as lighting artists to understand storytelling and mood and yeah. emotions and feelings and i drill that a lot in my students uh this is one of the reasons they get work is, is the focus i put into this skill set uh, and and you know i only do these sessions every few months i don't do it often because normally i do it for my students uh, but i think these are the key things you want to kind of uh, have an understanding of and I also think generally you know it doesn't have to be uh, uh, warm or filter it could also be a more greenish dirty town you know a little bit of um, uh, that can also work in this kind of environment so yeah this. so that also works so understanding these things i know it takes time so unless you have someone who helps you with these things on a regular basis it takes a lot of time it took me 10 years of painting and photography and all of these things to to be able to even explain to you what i'm seeing and what you need to do you know um so you know don't worry about it just keep practicing come back to our server ask for some help you know more than happy well, I'm happy to, to give as much help as I can. Um, yeah, so that's the general feedback. Again, same feedback here. You have all these specs for no reason. I don't see any light sources for this. Uh, and it's coming from the other direction uh, so far. You know, and then you have this light, but this one is the brightest. So you're having too many lights and they're competing with each other. So you would interior remove some of the lights and just see how much can you pull off with just one light lighting this area reducing the fog and you would have a more contrast and more interesting image um, i like the idea of what you're going but again you have a lot of too much of one thing basically so a very good practice is to do a lot with one light yeah, less is more, right? Yeah, at least in the beginning, and then eventually, if you do cinematic lighting, it's a different story, of course, because then you might have more fun, and you, you will look at this box and go, okay, this is boring, let's add a fake room light, okay, this isn't having a specular effect, I want this specular effect here, so you might add light, you know, and cheat your ass off 
that's a different topic altogether. <laughs> but yeah, these are the things you want to pay attention to. So yeah, hopefully that's uh, useful for you as well. And, uh, and do you have anything else you want to add? Um, not really. That's been very, very useful. So thank you very much. Okay, cool. Um, that's about it, I think. Uh, there are more portfolio pieces, but I think um, people should just come back another time. And uh, before we leave, I could uh, yeah just mention we have a lighting mentorship as well for people who are professional learning on improve at lightingbot.com. Uh, you cannot buy anything anymore. Uh, you have to book a call and I have to talk to you, I have to look at your art station and kind of go through this process that you guys already gone through for me to decide if I want you to join. So if anyone wants to uh, join, you can, uh, you know, you could be able to uh, learn a little bit and uh, do different things. Uh, so if you're interested, you know, let me know uh, on, on Discord or whatever. And uh, I'm more than happy to... Um, help you guys out so thank you again for tuning in and we managed to go two hours and 42 minutes i think the record is three hours uh but i think i'm gonna skip um some of the others for now so eric please post in the future amy please post in the future sandra i've already given you feedback because you're actually a student now so <laughs> you don't need it uh, and albert uh, Definitely a lot of feedback will be given to your work too. So thank you for trusting me and thank you for asking for help. And yeah, have a good uh, good day and I'll see you all around. And Filippo, thank you again for your time as well. And have a good day as well. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. No, no Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. I'll be ending the stream now. It's been... See you guys around. Uh, toodles. Tada. Bye-bye.